Hi, uh, my name is Flinch, and um, this song is called If It Worked Out For Michael Scott, It'll Probably Work Out For Me. Um, the song is called Just Because She Likes the Same Bizarro Crap You Do Doesn't Mean She's Your Soulmate, Tom. Mm.
My name is Beth, um, my artist name is Flinch, it's got a full stop at the end. Um, where am I from? I'm from Glasgow, um, born and bred here and I got into music really young. My parents put me into like baby music classes and the rest is history. I've been a musician ever since. Um, my band history growing up is a sore spot for a start. <laughs> when I was in fourth year at school, the boys in the year above me asked me to be in their band and I went home and said to my mum, boys have asked me to be in a band, but that's not what girls do, is it? So I never joined a band and I just uh, stayed in the school orchestra because I was a big nerd. And, um, and then I got to age like 22 or something and I dropped out of uni and I'd posted a Facebook status um, saying all I want to do is play bass and sing harmonies in a band and then about three months later Kim who was the bassist of Slow Light left Slow Light and Stephen was like oh I know somebody who could be in a band and then asked me to be in Slow Light. Um, so that's the the origin stories of me being in a band. <laughs> no I've changed my mind about whether girls should be in bands or not through being in a band and having a lot of fun and training up young girls in bands um, and they also have a lot of fun. So. Uh, yeah, if I could go back and tell 14-year-old Beth that she's a dick, I would <laughs> be like, just go and be in that band, mate. Just do it. I've done a little bit of work with Girls Rock Glasgow, which is um, a project completely run by volunteers um, out of their base at Kenning Park complex. And um, every summer when it's not COVID, um, we get a group of girls aged I think it's eight to 16 or eight to, yeah, eight to 17 maybe. Um, we get them for a week and we just give them little shots of all of the instruments like drums, bass, guitar, keyboards, vocals, and we get them to form bands and write songs and then put on a huge big gig. The last one was um, at the art school. So it's like a big proper, proper gig. Um, it's fantastic. See the music that these girls come up with, it's so good. And they do things like, um, they do herstory lessons where you learn about the like history of the right girl movement and they do consent lessons and like just lots of like well-being stuff and music stuff and just like going and being in a band like lessons it's great it's so good i'd been threatening to write a solo record for about four years it was every year it was on my new year's resolution it was like this is the year i'm gonna write a solo record i never did it because i was too busy having fun making music with my pals um, and then Covid happened and I was on my own in my living room and I kind of just, how did it happen? Oh, Laura Marling posted a here's how to play one of my song um, Instagram videos um, and she was showing what tuning she used for one of them and I watched it till she'd finished showing the tuning. I was like, I'm going to have that and then just went and wrote a couple of songs. They kind of just fell out of me. I think they've been like working themselves away I've always like sort of had vague ideas of songs and then an album appeared and now there's 11 tracks. <laughs> like all musicians, I presume, I've made a playlist on Spotify and it's called Flinchpiration and it's like, it was what I sent to the guy who mixed my record um, 
to just be like, these are kind of what I want to sound like and the things on there are like Diet Sig and Kississippi and Sincere Engineer and the Ophelias and sort of like all girl bands, sort of d distorted-ish guitars, kind of like sort of somewhere between kind of Midwestern emo and kind of like dreamy pop. And that's why I'm coining the term dreamo pop for it to be my genre. Um, but yeah, I've sort of like come, got to hear from a kind of Midwestern emo kind of post hardcore, I was gonna say upbringing, but not really upbringing, just like that's the world I was surrounded in. Um, but then I think the sort of, I can't not acknowledge a sort of like Phoebe Bridgers, Carla J. Easton kind of like, kind of their kind of dreamy pop kind of reverby sound um, but also I'm a bit scared of people being able to hear my mistakes and if you turn your reverb up loud enough then it covers your mistakes so it's a sort of a happy accident that we've ended up here. I think now with the internet nobody can does, like can be narrow-minded because there's just so much going on all the time and it's such a like big pool of stuff happening that there's like kind of a pocket for anyone to do anything. Um, but I think my experience of the sort of like Glasgow DIY kind of punk scene, um, looking back on it from like when I joined Slow Light, like that must have been what, seven years ago or something. At that point, it felt very like, here is what a hardcore band is supposed to sound like and you fill in the gaps and then you just do it. And if you did something outside of that, it, like nobody would be interested in it. Whereas now, and seven years isn't really that long a time, but now it's like, you can kind of get away with doing anything and people are like, oh, that's cool. She's just doing that because she wants to. Like, I'm really surprised by how nice people have been about my record when I didn't even try and make it fit into a genre. I just wrote it because I had nothing else to do and people have been into it. So I think people are just like, I think people understand now as well. And I think this is a lockdown thing of like, understand how, this is pure sounds like a cry for help, but how difficult it is to be a musician and to like make music and pay for it and do all the stuff. So I think people are just like, oh shit, you wrote like 11 songs and released them. So they don't, almost don't care what it sounds like anymore. <laughs> They're just like, shit, you did that, that's cool. <laughs> when I started Flinch, I recorded three um, demos in my kitchen and was like, they're not perfect, but I'm gonna put them online just so that I'm now accountable to the internet for them existing. Um, and that's just kept happening. So now I've got a vinyl <laughs> that I'm accountable for. And But when I started, I was like, I'm probably never gonna play these shows, play these songs live. Um, but I'm now probably, I've been booked for a couple of gigs sort of next year, so I'm probably gonna gig them. This song is called Staring at the Broken Cornicing on Your Ceiling. <laughs>
This one's called Escape from Rupture Farms.